Have you got some old electronics lying around and not sure about the proper way to dispose of them? Here's your first hint. As much as you may or may not have enjoyed that silly little bit that we did there, that was not it. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology for precise tracking, and RGB lighting to match your setup. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Now it's no great secret that to reduce your consumption, or reuse that which has already been consumed, is better in terms of ecological impact than recycling it. But Sometimes it happens that you might have an unfortunate run of bad luck that causes, oh, I don't know, three motherboards in a row to spontaneously die through no fault of your own. Or, here's another scenario, you've got devices that technically still work, but have come to the point where absolutely no one, not even your weird uncle who keeps milk crates of electronics in his garage, is willing to use them. So the first question I usually get is, why can't I just put my old CRT TV or motherboard or hard drive in the garbage? And the answer is that while you actually technically can, because most garbage collection services, frankly, don't have the time or willingness to dig through your trash bin to see what you put in there, there are a lot of good reasons why you shouldn't. Number one is that it keeps chemicals and heavy metals managed correctly. E-waste can contain mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, lithium, and a wide variety of other harmful or dangerous substances. Number two is that precious materials such as aluminum from casings, copper from wiring, or even gold from contact points can be recovered through the disassembly of old electronics. This lessens the need for harvesting new raw materials from the finite supply of resources that is our planet Earth. And number three, even if you're not a tree hugger or whatever, this should matter to you if you're a taxpayer, is that it keeps these items out of landfills, which means landfill space is conserved, lowering the cost of your local waste disposal services, and in the long term, even the cost associated with things like increased water filtration if any of these metals end up in the water supply. So then, Okay, that sounds great, Linus. Why aren't people doing this then? Great question, and the answer is pretty simple. It's time-consuming and tedious work to safely disassemble these products to the point where they can be reused in place of raw materials, which means it's actually quite expensive to do. So here in BC, Canada, we have what's called an environmental handling fee that gets charged on items that can be returned for free recycling. And while there's plenty of debate to be had about a mandatory fee at the time of purchase on all items, I'll leave that to the philosophers, but it's quite possible your region has a similar program that you can take advantage of. And even if it doesn't, you may discover some random and unexpected ways to dispose of this stuff as well. Bottle depots, for example, in my area are the return point for most e-waste, and IKEA, of all places, has their own in-store drop-off for household battery and light bulb recycling. Go figure. And if your area doesn't have anything like this, there are services like thinkrecycle.com that do charge for the items that they can't get any value out of, but can actually pay a bounty for some other items. And they'll do things like refurbish toner cartridges, and they'll accept and even pay by the pound for phones, iPads, and laptops, even if they're completely non-functional. All you have to do is put at least 15 items in a box and ship it off to them. If you have enough of the acceptable items versus complete junk, they're even willing to provide you with a free shipping label. 
But wait, if this video has inspired you to run out and responsibly dispose of your electronic waste, there are a couple of things you should do first. Number one, see if it still works, hey? We've got a local program called FreeGeek that is willing to take a lot of old computer and electronic stuff and distribute it to people and organizations that need it. Like I said at the beginning, reuse is better than recycling. And number two, while you're at it, thoroughly wipe any personal data off of your devices before recycling them. While most people don't even want to see that selfie sex tape you made that night after graduation or whatever, anyone who does want to see it, you probably don't want them seeing it. So do your due diligence. And on the subject of digital security, it's fairly common knowledge among the tech savvy that even in a perfect world, text-based passwords without additional authentication factors are just not very secure. And there are a lot of companies out there trying a lot of different things to improve this, which leads us to today's episode sponsor, TrueKey by Intel Security. It's a password manager that removes the hassle of passwords across all of your devices, computers, phones, and tablets with support for Windows with Chrome and IE support, iOS and Android. You can log into apps and websites with your face, fingerprint, or by swiping a notification on your personal smartphone. And it always knows that you're you with multi-factor authentication. Only a combination of being on a trusted device, passing facial recognition, and or swiping a notification on your smartphone can unlock your passwords. And you can add extra factors to passwords you'd like to really lock down, or fewer for websites that you'd like to access faster and that don't hold any valuable information. Your true key account syncs across all of your devices, so be sure to download it to your phones, tablets, and computers. You can find a link for where to try it out in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop on Amazon, instructions up there, by buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our awesome community forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right corner to check out our tour of our server room, where I show some of the hardcore gadgetry that makes the whole operation tick around here. Here. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.